Hey everyone, uh, this is the uh, short version of the electric motor uh, component walkthrough. Um, if you want the longer version, you can uh, watch uh, episode 75 there. Just click on the link at the top right. Thanks. You know, it, uh, it's a little tight cramped quarters here on the boat, um, but I did want to give a quick rundown on the um, uh, on the electric motor. So um, I just wanted to uh, say thanks first off to uh, Muj over at uh, uh, Golden Motor Canada. Uh, that's where I got um, the electric motor components. Um, it's been a big help because it's been a learning curve for me, so I've asked him a lot of questions and uh, he's always been helpful. And uh, well, actually, I think the whole uh, Golden Motor is, was, was helpful because I had some challenges in the beginning with a bad controller. And, uh, you know, they helped work me through and I wasn't feeling like I was being going to be stuck with anything, which is kind of important. So, anyways, um, this is a 48 volt, uh, 10 kilowatt uh, BLDC. Uh, motor, electric motor, and this uh, BLDC means brushless DC motor. Uh, so uh, it uses very little energy comparative to the amount of torque that it has. And uh, my boat is uh, almost uh, 36 feet long. Um, so uh, doing the math from the old Atomic Four that I pulled out, I had a um, about the equivalent of 30 horsepower out of the Atomic Four is what they said. Uh, but you really have to rev it hard and uh, you might, it's old. By the time you actually measured the power going out to the shaft, you know, I'm sure it was a lot less than that. Uh, some people say as low as eight horsepower, equivalent um, horsepower. Uh, so uh, this motor here in equivalency 10 kilowatts is about 13 horsepower. So I have more power out of this motor than the old Atomic 4. And the second thing that's um, uh, maybe notable about going to an electric motor versus um, natural combustion engine is that uh, the efficiency factor is a complete opposite. So you have to really rev a motor in a, on the atomic four to get that torque and that power, whereas you have instant torque on this motor. It's, uh, you know, they say 85%, 90% efficient. I don't know what the exact number is. Um, it, it's sort of dependent upon the RPM that you're, that you're at, but Let's just say for sake of argument, 85% efficient. So when you first turn it on, you have 85% of the torque. So what I noticed instantly when using this is I don't need to push this as hard at all compared to the Atomic 4. Like uh, it's barely moving and I'm getting a lot more torque out of the same prop uh, and whatnot. So um, this motor is the liquid cool version. I, I don't have the liquid cooling hooked up yet. I have the parts uh, for it. I've got a little rad now and I've got a couple of uh, leads that are going to go to it. I just need to get a little motor in there that uh, will flick on uh, if the temperature uh, gets to a certain de um, degrees or whatever. Uh, this motor has uh, two stators, that's why there's two feeds in, into it. So, uh, you know, I don't quite know the, the logic or the reasoning for that, but I do know that um, when you hook it up to your controller, you can either have two controllers sharing the load to one motor, or you can have one controller, I think, feeding two motors. Uh, but the better design, I think, is actually to have two controllers. Uh, because these things do get hot, actually. And uh, right now I don't have any throttling hooked up. Um, I'm going to show you my uh, new throttle uh, that I have from, uh, from Golden Motor as well. Uh, last year I, I did it with a bicycle throttle, actually, just because I was I didn't know much about it. so kind of had to work out what I had and it was just what I had. So um, this vector, uh, it's the VEC 500. That's what controls the motor. So it has two main uh, feeds. It's uh, taking 48 volts in and the, uh, the controller itself then is a, uh, a pure sign three phase control motor controller. So it basically sends the right impulses in phase to pull the, um, I guess they would be the magnets or the electrodes around the stators, which turns the motor. Uh, so that's actually what controls all of that. 
and uh, you, uh, I'm not a big fan of the software uh, in it, but it's been working fine. Biggest thing is that, I mean, it works, but um, there's not a lot of help, like um, what the settings are supposed to be or what's optimal for this throttle or this motor. Um, they could do a better job there, but it does work fine. Um, it's got a fuse here as well, so if there's, um, it's a 400 amp fuse, so if something shorts, it'll blow. In behind, uh, there is uh, our my uh, battery bank. So I have uh, eight DC uh, batteries. These are from Magna, and uh, they are the GC225s, which uh, you know essentially stands for uh, 225 amps. And uh, the way it's set up is that at a 25 amp draw, I have about 440 minutes. Uh, so. Uh, it's just sort of what I'm working with. And so by putting them in series, they generate 48 volts. So just from a bird's eye perspective here, uh, looking over the controller down at how this is connected, uh, the motor has a one inch shaft and my uh, prop uh, shaft is a seven eighths. So what I, do I did get was a seven eighths um, jar coupler here. and. You can see it makes a bit of noise when it's turning. Um, that's about the only noise that I hear actually now. It's it's extremely quiet. Um, so to make uh, the coupling work, there's a Neo uh, Flex uh, Spider in between the two couplers. So this one is a one inch coupler, that's a seven eighths. You slide that on that shaft, you slide this one on this shaft. I've got to adjust it a little bit. I've st I can bring it in just a touch more. Um, uh, closer, but it's been working fine for my tests here so far. Okay, and uh, why the jar coupler? Uh, there, this gives you the ability to have just any kind of slight misalignment, and the neoprene or the or the uh, plastic um, or the flexible part of the coupler. This is uh, annotated steel, and um, this uh, flexible part actually absorbs any of the slight. Uh, uh, misalignments that there might be because it's it's very hard to get something perfect yeah. and then uh, there's a bearing here behind the plate and this bearing is uh, in place to act as thrust control so it basically there's two couplers on each side uh, last year I only had one but I wanted to double it up so there's two shaft couplers that are locked on the shaft and basically when you have pressure pushing uh, the propeller pushing the boat forward uh, the two behind can't push past the bearing. The bearing is affixed to the steel plate here. Uh, this is the uh, golden motor. Uh, I don't remember the model number of this thing here, but basically that's the throttle that I'm using now. In potentiometer style uh, throttle. And uh, basically when you go forward, it goes forward. And when you pull back, it goes back. So you don't need any of the uh, reverse switches or anything like that hooked up. You just leave them open. And basically this cable has a couple of ends that fit into that, into the uh, motor itself, or sorry, in, yeah, into the controller. And uh, that's basically how it works. Short uh, on uh, the electric motor setup. Um, I'm going to post another video. Uh, you can check the link here on the top right hand corner, wherever, top right hand corner, uh, wherever that is. <laughs> Um, and that'll be a longer version where I'll maybe talk about some of the uh, pain points that I've learned uh, a lot more detail on the uh, electric motor but uh, very thankful to the guys over at uh, Golden Motor in particular um, uh, Mooch for all your help on the setup and uh, yeah it's been a year it's been working all right I said overall satisfaction I'm not uh, what do you call it I'm not being sponsored in any way by those guys but uh, you know they're they got an okay product, and uh, you know I've been able to work uh, work with the system and the and the, the it controlling the boat uh, just fine.